Hey, Legend of Korra fans, how are you? Um, by now, I'm pretty sure most of you, if not all of you, know uh, the, the very heartbreaking news that went public on Wednesday, uh, announced by Nickelodeon. Just just a, a low blow to a lot of Korra fans, such, a, such as myself, you know, um, people that are invested in the series. And that is the news that, unfortunately, I am not potty trained. I've never been able to use the toilet, I've never learned to use it, and I probably never will. It's just, it's a condition, it's a very sad flaw that I have, but hopefully um, those that love me will be able to accept me even without being potty trained. Oh, oh you, want, you guys want to hear about the other news? Okay, so the real news is that Nickelodeon has decided to pull Legend of Korra off the air. Um, all subsequent episodes after episode 8, which is the one that we just got tonight, will be online only. Uh, it's, a sad, it's a sad piece of information, uh, but if you look at the numbers, you can tell that the, 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 the rating has been just going down ever since season 1. So episode 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, you'll be able to catch on, on sites like Hulu. I think there's something called the Nick app and Nick.com, which is where I'm going to be watching uh, the series uh, from now on. Now, this doesn't mean that season four is canceled. Uh, all it means is there's a transition. Instead of watching it on TV, you'll get it online because uh, season four has already been paid for. So Cora hasn't really been canceled by Nickelodeon. It's just been stopped uh, from being broadcasted on TV. So no more Cora on TV. If you want my opinion, there's a lot of people to blame in this. I think there were different factors that added up that just led to this. Obviously, the mismanagement going on in Nickelodeon in terms of advertising the series was, was pretty bad. Very, very poor marketing and advertising for season three. Uh, but I don't want to say that it's just Nickelodeon's fault because it's not. I think if you look at the numbers, you'll realize that ever since season one, people have dropped out of the series. Uh, Less people watched season season two than they did season one, and even less people moved on to actually watch season three, which is pretty disappointing considering the fact that, in, in my opinion, season three is the best out of the three that we've gotten. I mean, obviously, I don't know how it's going to end. In fact, I think the conflict of season three is going to go on to season four because uh, the, these villains are too powerful to be dealt with in, in this book, in my opinion. Um, so, so it's really a shame that this is happening, and what's really a shame is that Korra, out of, out of the, sh the few shows that I've seen, and when I, I mean seen, I mean glanced over, that I, that I know are in, in the Nickelodeon lineup, Korra is by, by far the best. I mean, so the fact that this is being substituted by an episode of Spongebob, which has really, really no message, the plot is predictable it's 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 there is no plot to these episodes of spongebob it's just you know very bland humor very stupid humor but unfortunately that's what sells in america that's that's what we like to consume as viewers the consumerist culture just flocks over to stuff that is mediocre you know just just average and mediocre stuff that's what we like yeah yeah the rest i don't know it, it makes me think you know it, you're making me think. You're making my brain hurt. I don't want to think. I just want to sit down and, you know, laugh at SpongeBob getting a boner. Just to play devil's advocate, okay? I can understand if Nickelodeon is making more money because that's what corporations thrive on, money. If they're making more money out of this show by posting the episodes online, which they have because they tested this with uh, the finale of season two by releasing it online before it ever went on TV, um... Well, then it's their right. As much as I don't like it, it's their right to take it off the air. Um, that being said, it's just a bummer that you, you take something that, you know, overall has a good message. The animation is, is, is almost, for the most part, flawless. The plot is pretty entertaining. You know, the, the characters, for the most part, have been likable this season. You take that away, and instead we get stuff like, you know, Sam and Cat, which, by the way, also got canceled. And uh, Ariana Grande was involved in that. Now, I don't, I don't want to, you know, make any comments about Ariana Grande because I don't know her personally. But those are two shows that Ariana Grande has been a part of and they've been canceled. Victorious, Sam and Cat, canceled. Both had Ariana Grande in them. 
what is going on? No, but in all seriousness, though, uh, the truth of the matter is, you can tell, like, if you, if you compare Nickelodeon as a company, as a network, with other companies such as Cartoon Network and Disney Channel, you can tell that the Nickelodeon is, is a little low on the, on the, on the money. Um, and, you know, I, I took a trip to L.A., uh, in January of this year, and you could tell, like, like their studios, you you can tell that the money, like the big money maker, Disney, all the way. Oh man, um, Cartoon Network has Toonami, which I appreciate, but Disney, Disney, as far as I know, is the only channel that is able to advertise itself in in itself, and that's all it shows. If you look at the commercials in Disney Channel, what do you see? It is commercials for other Disney Channel shows. So maybe Cora maybe could have benefited if, if it, or I mean, I don't even know if it can move to Disney Channel. I don't know how the contracts work. Uh, at this point, it, it seems like if, if another network wanted to air Cora, they would need to outbid Nickelodeon, you know, buy, buy Nickelodeon off for the uh, rights to air the show. But honestly, I don't, I don't see that happening. And unfortunately, because it's not on TV, I think a lot less new viewership is going to be invested in the show or is going to you know, get hooked on the show. But on the bright side of things, it also means that international fans, I think, I mean, at least that's what I understand, the show will be more accessible to international fans because international fans can't turn on Nickelodeon on Friday nights and watch Korra. They have to wait for it to be uploaded online somewhere. If Nickelodeon streams it internationally, then they'll increase the international viewership, which gets them more money. So hopefully it works out for them. You know, my respect to the creators, they, they're, they're the best. Even though I, you know, kind of criticize season two very heavily, I still think they're awesome. But now on to the review. What a great episode to end Korra's TV run. Like, the bending in this, the Terror Within features one of the best bending battles this entire show, and I'm including uh, Avatar Last Airbender has ever had. On one side you have Sue, Lin, Mako, and Bolin. On the other side you have the, the villain, the villain uh, Elemental 4. Korra's knocked out. She gets knocked out with a dart, which by the way, that waterbender man, geez, like that bitch is scary. The way that she used her ice on the window to get the darts in, epic as fuck. She, she is by far my favorite bender of the four. Uh, great stuff. Uh, there's this part where, well, before that, Bolin can't really metal bend yet. And one of my viewers made a very astute observation that in this episode, you actually see Bolin notice the lava bender, right? The person who let the comment implied said that instead of having Bolin uh, metal bend, which we can obviously see that he's struggling, what if the creators have him learn lava bending? And so he becomes an attribute for, for Team Avatar that way, instead of learning to metal bend. I kind of want to know how much time passed since Korra learned to metal bend uh, up until this episode. Because in the beginning of this episode, she had some pretty sick moves. Those moves look, look top-notch. They look professional as hell. Varric was incredibly funny in this episode, especially funny. Uh, you know, I like the part where he's like, Hey, Bolin, can I give you some relationship advice? Oh, well, your loss. And then the, the airbender detector, that was great. And then obviously having Zuli rub his feet. The music was also very good, especially I like the track that they play when they focus on the Elemental Four. It, it, it just gives you like an eerie sort of feel, a sinister feel, but at the same time, it, it feels epic. Those beats feel very, very epic, and it just gets you into the episode a lot more. I actually thought that they set up the tension so that Bolin would, would, would metal bend uh, to hit Sparky Sparky Boom Boom Woman in the, in the, in the forehead, right? Uh, but no, he just takes her out with a pebble. Now, the animation, again, for this whole thing is just beautiful. The bending is just so well choreographed. The lava looked amazing. Now, there's this one part where Sahir is gliding around and, and Sue does something that reminded me of May. Uh, she has, like, these knives tucked in inside her sleeve. Just throws them. <laughs> Speaking of Sue, am I the only one who's suspicious of her still? Like, even after the butler turned out to be the traitor. I mean, both of them could be working together and he could be lying when when he questioned her, like, if, if they were in fact working together, he wasn't gonna say, oh, by the way, she's a traitor too. There's three main things that make me suspicious of Sue. Uh, the first one being that by the end of this episode, she kind of does the opposite of what Lynn wanted Cora to do, which is okay, but she kind of puts Korra in a position of, she puts Korra in harm's way, pretty much, even though she's the Avatar and she wanted to go. The second reason I have is that when she is told by Team Avatar 
that Ai Wei was the traitor, she does this. I noticed this in her eyes. She does, really, really? And the third reason for why I still suspect Sue is that her husband, uh, as we learned in one of the episodes, is the architect for the city. So you want to tell me that the architect of the city didn't know that there was a hidden passage into the, the closed up domes and that that hidden passage was, you know, inside of a house? That seems a little bit suspicious to me. I, I could be totally wrong. Those are just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Um, I'm really glad that they solved the, the mystery in one episode and that they didn't drag it on. I'm really thankful for that. Uh, so as a whole, I thought the episode was great, to be honest. Very, very good way to end the TV run. Sad that it has to come to an end, but hey, such is life sometimes. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below sharing your thoughts. Like the review if you did. I appreciate that as well. And subscribe to get more core content once the episodes come out. Thanks, guys. Bye.